it's everything I love about theater. It's creative, it has writing, it's completely done by the actors and students. There wasn't really a dull moment, it always kept you laughing. It was just like a true like comedy. Mainly how like, simple it was, there's only three actors, they were all insanely talented. The set was very simple, prop use was minimal, and it was still an amazing show, like I recommend it to everybody. My name is Jeremy Bowie. I'm a theater performance major at Wichita State University, also getting a certificate in directing and film studies for the complete works of William Shakespeare abridged. I was the director. After I had submitted the show, Brett had set me down and told me my show was chosen by the faculty and that I would not be able to produce it in the Wellsbacher Theater, which is where student work is normally done at Wichita State. He told me I, would, I would need to find a different location so with that, I started looking on at other places on campus. I had thought originally and asked about doing it in our pit theater in Wilner, but that is not handicap accessible, so that was ruled out there. In July, this, I met with um, Danette Baker and Linda Starkey at Wichita State, and they suggested strongly looking into touring it to high schools. And then Danette got in further contact. We set up a meeting with all the 259 drama faculty, where I pitched my show to them, and they were all on board. It to be unprecedented in the history of theater, and that is to, in one complete show, capture the magic, the genius, the towering grandeur that is the complete works of William Shakespeare. Now we've got My name is Trevor Browser. I'm a junior at Wichita State University, currently a BFA theater performance major, so Bachelor's of Fine Arts theater performance major and my character in the play is Daniel Singer. Yeah, so the character was initially the, one of the writers of the play, but because my name's not Daniel, and the director just wanted us to be ourselves in that aspect, um, it got switched to our names. So my character is actually Trevor. Yeah, you. Married to my uncle, my father's brother. <laughs> Thy funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Horatio. I'm Emily Graves, and I am a theater performance major here at Wichita State. The Royal Theater of Denmark presents the murder of Gonzago, the Lord Act One. Hi, I'm Allison Miller. I am actually a junior at WSU, but I'm just now transferring uh, to a theater performance major. My name is Griffin Leander. For my role uh, during this production, I am the understudy for Allison and Emily. So, and I shall make thee think thy swan a crow. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice. The idea of it being a touring show was a concept that I didn't think about. It had first come to light that it would be like different parts of the campus that were gonna do it. And I, I was curious as to how they were gonna do that even because of how the, the script is set in one spot. So honestly, I had no idea how this was gonna come together. When I originally submitted the show, costume-wise I was leaning towards more of having a base costume and then the actors throwing on whether it would be end up being hats or other costume pieces on over their initial base costume. With the set, I was, in my original proposal, I put it to be fairly simplistic. So I think this all played into the faculty wanting to do it or try a touring show with a production from here. It was a Mona. A Mona. He left her alone. <laughs> Oh, no. They all get into it, making boombox noises and roaming the stage with hip hop attitude. Even Bob, the lighting operator, gets into it as multicolored lights begin flashing to the beat. Honestly, the first oh. read through, everybody seemed to just click instantly. We were just 
all there in the same headspace right away. Sin from my lips, oh trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. I, I don't want to kiss you, man. It's in the script. <laughs> because everybody was ready to come in and focus, but also come in and have fun. We knew it was comedic. We knew this was going to take a kind of energy that took us being on our toes, being willing to go to a place of lightheartedness and comedy, even if we weren't always feeling it. And Romeo and Juliet are dead. Woo! You have Lee and good night! I would like one of you um, uh, and Romeo and Juliet are dead to go to a falsetto note. The exits were mostly written into the script, but as far as like blocking on stage and like where we're walking around, uh, that was mainly him. Like Hamlet, for example, it says to, like walk in, uh, doing like a silly walk. So they had me do like Monty Python style. What the actual script says, feel free to improv. This show was built off of improv, and this is just kind of the crystallized form, but it's not a solid structure that you have to live and die by. I remember creating the Justin Bieber in Arizona instead of George Bush in Japan, like to try and make that more topical. And instead of making fun of Newt Gingrich, we changed it to Trump as the, the part of the comedies, instead of turning them into a newt and then becoming the Speaker of the House, we say turns him into a Cheeto man and made him the President of the United States. Also be referring to Trump because that's what we changed it to in the first place. Yes, good idea. Oh yeah. Oh. So every single time they say fish creature or monster, they're going back to refer to Another euphemism for Trump. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to change it to make sense. So instead of speaking, the magician of the house, turns the Cheeto man into a newt. <laughs> yes, I like that. Great. Who becomes the president? Who becomes the president of the, of the United States? States. Yes. You know, all the kids playing ball, and I think to myself, why can't this Shakespeare stuff be more like sports? Sports? How do you mean? Well, you're gonna be sort of like a a valley girl, I guess. That's what they told me. Okay. So yeah. Be like this. Be like, oh my yeah, god, what the hell? Jeez. Seriously. We are doing a short scene for the USD 259 One Act Play Festival. Oh, I like to rise early in the morning when the sun rises. Oh, it's him! I hate him! I hate his whole family! I hate his whole family too! Everything just barks and barks and barks and never shuts up! All right, I need some help. I need you to say, Benfolio stinks! Benfolio stinks! Benfolio stinks! Benfolio stinks! Would have liked to have had a full run through of the show before we were on break to see where we were at, but due to my schedule being very busy the last couple of weeks, that did not happen. So it's also, I'm kind of concerned where they're at with their line memorization, particularly with Act 2 right now but I think they'll come back from break and have it all down pat. Uh, the mission after coming back from break was to get my lines down because I was still struggling with um, having my lines memorized when I came back, but that was made worse by me <laughs> being sick for most of our first week back before we actually came back to school. We had a, like, a week of rehearsals um, before school started again. Until we have up until you go to die. Wait, or you guys will circle back around to like your fight spots? Mm -hmm. I didn't air! Yeah, yes, you did. I had to throw half of it to air. <laughs> what happened to Griffin? Uh, Griffin, as far as I know, uh, we haven't talked about it, like a whole lot, and I haven't talked to like any faculty about it. But I think I think he dropped out of school, um, probably just to refocus on what he wanted to do in life, and which happens. Uh, my name is Emerson Ross. I'm a freshman musical theater major. Hot, but he probably popped a flea. Not yet. No. 
Uh, what's the line? Or what's the first word? Uh, and. And. <laughs> what's the second word? Othello. Oh. And Othello, and Othello say. Damn, it's getting pretty scary. So he pulled out his blade and committed Harry Carey. Just kind of getting to know him and seeing how fast he picked things up was really a comfort. It was a, a relief, especially seeing as Emily ended up not having to leave. Emerson stepped in more as an understudy for myself, which gave me a lot of relief because I was honestly really worried about doing two shows a day. I didn't know if my body could do it. You know, I might be able to push myself for two, three days, but you know, you push yourself for two, three, four days, and then you spend a week in bed making up for it. That's just how it is when you're chronically ill. So having Emerson step in and having him be more focused on understudying me was a huge breath of relief. Kind of go up, join in. It's better than the boat. It's really just kind of join in. That's why we have our scripts. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> My character specifically is kind of dumb. Um, he kind of just did things the way he wanted to do things. And the fact that I was referenced as myself so I could bring in my own personality to it and into the lines and not feel like I had to really hone in Adam because it's written for to use my name and, and you know how I want to present my, these lines as me. You've seen a lot of swords being used here, a lot of props flying back and forth to make these things look simple but really they're very difficult and very dangerous. Please keep in mind that the three of us are trained professionals. Do not, <laughs> not try this at home! Yeah, go over to a friend's house. We came alive as soon as we started having an audience, as soon as we started having people there to, you know, bounce off of, to interact with, to, to play to. It was really when things started to meld and to come into place. Why did the bicycle have to leave one at all? Because it was too tired. Because it was too tired. <laughs> the audience was different each time and in such a different way. It's almost like each school was performing in a different state because of how varied each reaction we got was. Now just request it. Okay, second basis for a second date, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> no. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Allison Miller! better to start out in the audience because it made me feel more comfortable to go back in the audience and to pick on my audience because I'd already been sitting with them. <laughs> I'd already been familiarized with them. I'd already heard them talking. I'd heard, uh, you know, heard their ideas and their preconceived notions about the show, like hearing them talk to each other before things started. Okay, good. Save something later. Uh, what, was, what was your problem? You weren't really participating that much. Uh, you know what that means, don't you? You're gonna have to do it all, all by yourself. yourself. <laughs> don't be embarrassed. Nobody's watching. Okay. Well, set those hands up. Maybe, maybe not. All right. There you go. But the fact that we got the attention that we did from the crowds that we toured with was really impressive to me. I know that some of them were theater-going kids um, that were interested in pursuing it as a college degree, but others were just people from English classes being kind of forced to go, like, no, you need to see this. And there was a real difference between those two audiences. Right in, arms up! audience participation section was probably one of my favorite parts of the show. I don't know, it makes the show feel like different. You're not just sitting there and like watching, you get to be a part of it. You can play Ophelia, my mother can play Ophelia. Emily <laughs> <laughs> right there can play Ophelia. Let's clap for you, Maggie. This is getting ahead of
<laughs> well, we brought up a girl um, for Ophelia who did not really want to play Ophelia, um, she, and Ophelia is supposed to scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what was your problem? You were you were a girl. You know what that means, don't you? You, you do, do it all by yourself. yourself. You don't do that. <laughs> She didn't want to do that. Every time she went to go do it, she would just like laugh and be like, I can't do it. Um, but it was taking too long, and I was like, well, we need to keep going. Two, three. Hey, come to our school. Like, we, we can do this here. We can do this anywhere else. So you could do this too. You know. Because our energy, even though we were bringing our own show, the people who were watching us and how they responded to us and how they responded to us playing with them really dictated how a lot of the show went, um, which was kind of surprising. It was interesting to have to adjust to. Okay. Can you help out with this? Here's a story about a brother by the name of Othello. He liked white women and he liked green jello. Okay, yeah. And a punk named Diago who made himself a mess because he didn't like his clothes. The opportunity to break that fourth wall like that and to shock people and to watch them become just like uncomfortable to a point that you can see them physically recoiling, it was just as entertaining for me as I would hope we were as entertaining for the audience, to be honest. Oh, you can take it. They have their own place. Where are you going? Uh, I'm killing this guy. I'm killing him. <laughs> No kid, no matter how much they love theater, no matter how much they love plays, does not want to be in school longer than they have to be. And I think we really saw that type of reaction when we performed at Heights. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sorry, the character formerly known as Prince. Profaners of his name as Saints. Come, come, come. <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> Can you bring me my Romeo? Um, Alright, we're starting to have the Bernard and Horatio. We also need to go to the Bernard and Horatio. We can just get them, they have their own play. Where are you going? I'm close! I'm close! I'm close! I'm close! Heights has like a very large auditorium, but I was running after him and they have, there's like this incline and my ankle rolled and it made like this snapping popping noise and I like hit the floor. And so when she fell, I thought she might've just tripped on something, was gonna get back up, but I kept looking and looking and I didn't see her. I was like, well, I can't just sit here. Kids are literally turned around staring at me and I was like, I gotta get up. So I tried as hard as I could to uh, get up and limp my way out of the auditorium uh, while maintaining the scene and like carrying on the joke. And I was like, if you get any further than the party lot, I'm calling it off. <laughs> this isn't happening. Like, she, like what? You know, because it was so surprising. I was just out in the hallway with my wig on, you know, waiting for her to come out the door. And she's talking about some, I broke my ankle. Um, Maybe. I, uh, okay. Oh, hey. Okay. So, the people that were like, that was, oh, shh. That was running past the audience when, when it happened, they were like, oh, they like holy hurt. sh. Ow. It is very swollen. <laughs> Jeremy, you want to make a call? Yeah, my mom works so um, Okay. She's not going to do it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and end the show here. For I'm sorry. I'm just no, you're fine. Right you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> to do about this like no because <laughs> he really had our public perform like our last performance was that night yeah emerson's gonna go on for a movie tonight 
<laughs> this what, is what script in his hand? I mean, they put understudy slash swing in the program for a reason, I guess. So, we'll see. I need to know if I need to call in for work or not. Like, do you, um, you know, in the sense of like, if she's gonna go on tonight, so should I just like- Emily's not gonna go on tonight. She's not gonna I'd recommend you go ahead and start working on the part, so I'll give you the script that you used the one day. I'm gonna check my schedule and see if someone is like, if someone can cover me, because I'm a teacher. And so, there has to be at least two teachers in the room for the amount of children that we have. So, hopefully there's an extra in the building somewhere, or so there, we have like an extra in my room. Hi Amber, this is Emerson. Um, I will not be able to come in today. Um, I have to take care of a minor family emergency, so I won't be in today. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. They said they're already low tonight, they're already struggling, but those kids might just have to take care of themselves because this is important. <laughs> I knew that we had to do whatever we could to get Emerson ready. That's unfair to Emerson to just let him deal with a part that he is not really prepared for and just have Jeremy direct him in that. When you really need those two people, at least two people interacting at one time in a scene and then Jeremy directing to make sure that certain things are happening. Greatest, okay, greatest play, okay. <sighs> Time to set the scene for the greatest play ever written in the English language. The time, time to set the scene for the greatest play ever written in the English language, Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. The place, Denmark. The time, 12th, maybe 13th century, give or take. Two guards enter. The battlements of Elsinore Castle. The, the, the battlements of Elsinore Castle. Round about midnight. Round about midnight. Let me do that again. No, I'm, I'm, my lord, I think I saw him yesterday. My father? Where? Saw who? Oh, saw who? The king, your father. The king, my father, where? And I could do this if I could print off certain pages and put them in the book as lines. Oh yeah, for like the, yeah. my Willie? Um, or do for you that, like... for both, for the manuscript and for the book for Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Yes. Their own play, we can skip them. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'll kill this guy, I'll kill him. You leave him alone. Get back here this instant, you Shakespeare wimp. <laughs> God, too soon. <laughs> too fucking <laughs> soon. <laughs> Not only was it something that I hadn't been rehearsing for months on end, but also a lot of the parts um, was with the script. Especially because this was a paying audience, I didn't want them to be paying to watch some guy read off a script and not, you know, portray any any character. And I'd worked so hard on my uh, on my character for the show that I now had to switch into a completely almost opposite character for Emily. And so a, a hard part of it was really just putting on a convincing performance for the audience. So we had to get new blocking done. We had to get new uh, fight choreography taught to Emerson that he had never done before, or he did the reverse of, so that he could be prepared for a last minute final show. Damon, you're gonna advance. Ting! But not like that. It's oh. actually gonna be an advance with your arm. arm. Got it, okay. Yeah. And so when I actually go, another thing you wanna do is you wanna go back. Okay. So it's like, swing, ting, ting, ting. Ting! What's, What's that, that over there? Over there. Huh? And then you're gonna tap by my lower back and butt. Ow, oh, my buttocks! Uh, come for the, what's the line there? Come, come for a third, third layer. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Come for a third layer, cheese. Swing! And then it's ting, 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 ting. Switch to that arm. Ting, 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 ting. Go ahead and hold it out straight. And then when I go down, Ding. let go, and then it's whoo, whoo, uh, there it is, yo, repost, coup d'etat, uh, cafe LA, uh, baguette, uh, uh, disarmes. Yeah, so that's the other thing, is I throw it. So yes. make, try and make sure to catch it from the handle if you yes. can. So it's gonna be disarmes. Uh, disarmes. Go. And then it's ah! Look, look up, look back at the sword, look up, merd. And then it's a side fold. Do you know how to do a side fold? Like to this side? Yes, because yes. it's going to be the side opposite of the sword, so that yes. the sword doesn't get damaged or damage you. Yes. Okay, so then it's just merd. 
So that was very nerve wracking for me and very kind of like surreal because it's nothing like that has ever happened. I've never been in that type of situation before. But I was like, you know, this is the purpose of live theater is that this kind of stuff happens. And so it's, that's kind of my job, you know, as an actor is to be able to be prepared for the things that can happen out in live theaters. I submit to you that our collective capacity to comprehend much less... A lot of the memorization Emerson had mentioned he just picked up on on being on stage with Emily. So I thought that was really cool, given that it was not a track he was assigned to learn at all. He still had the Romeo script. Lee, with Shakespeare's first, with, with one of his most beloved plays, Romeo and Juliet. Um, now, of course, it would be impossible to portray all the roles of Romeo and Juliet with three actors, which is why we decided to use two. <laughs> it had the blocking and everything in it, so that way he could look at it if he needed to, and he essentially that night used the script for the show as a prop, basically. Uh, <laughs> we did realize that we were probably going to have to switch back to some of the older jokes. Like there's a part where I start to throw up and I say, oh no, I'm Justin Bieber in Arizona. But we were like, okay, well this audience isn't going to know about that. So hopefully they'll know that George Bush threw up on the Prime Minister of Japan. So it was kind of like on the fly changing things back because we realized that our audience was a different demographic. Oh no, I'm Bush Senior in Japan. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of a problem with Romeo Othello because, well, first of all, just because I'm the only black cast member doesn't mean I want to do Othello. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're honkies. <laughs> It was kind of bittersweet, I, I think would be the best word to describe it, because um, while I wanted to be up there with them, I was so proud of them for like what they were putting together, and especially proud of Emerson for being willing to just go up there and like take over my role, even though he has never read for it. So it was kind of just like a mix of like, I wish I could be up there with you guys, but I can't be, so I'm proud of what you're doing anyways. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. During which the pages close get ripped off, revealing female female genitalia. <laughs> it's awesome how with so little we're able to still do so much. And it's really surprising how much can fit in this trunk. From uh, like 18 different blades to a full-size dummy that looks just like me. It's, it's crazy. I think it's something that we should do like, if not every year, then like every few years for sure. Yes, I loved it and I really want to find out when I can see more, so. Just being able to put all these crazy elements together and make it into a production that people actually thoroughly enjoyed was very interesting, interesting and I think definitely helped me grow as a performer. Because definitely if I can do this at Wichita State, then that's definitely where I want to go for college. Given that this is the first time I have solo directed a production, I enjoyed it enough to where I want to direct more in the future. I think that it ended up benefiting everyone to do a touring show who was involved, so that way they could see if it was something that they would want to do in the future. From success, from what I've heard back from teachers they at the schools, they all enjoyed having us there and might even want to have something like this done in the future too. That's kind of just what touring taught me is, is know where you're going, know where your stuff is. You get a new audience, you get fresh faces every day, have fun. <laughs> <laughs>